Welcome back to a podcast that we call Yes, You Can Lead Life and Leadership Lessons from me, your host, Chip Nightingale. My goal with this podcast is to help encourage people, businesses, coaches, pastors, and families when it comes to life and leadership lessons. What we need to understand is that God created all of us to lead and to be led. I believe that the best way for us to accomplish our goals as leaders is to grow together as leaders. Unfortunately, trials are a part of everyday life. How we handle those trials lets people know what we value the most. In leadership, it is important that we lead well through those trials. Ultimately, these dark days in our lives will make or break our leadership. When you think about our world we are living in today, the world looks dark. It's those that shine their light through this darkness that will make a difference for eternity. I want to be known for leading well, even when times are dark. So let's dive into episode 11, part one of Leading Through Trials. Truth number one is this. The desert and dark seasons in your life may be the most essential part of your spiritual development and may serve as the precursor to God revealing his plan that initiates a radical work in your life. I want you to think about that truth for a moment. That through this trial, these dark seasons in your life, that these could possibly be the most essential part of your spiritual development and may serve as a precursor to God revealing his plan. Think about that. This trial, this dark season in your life, God may be using that to reveal his plan that initiates a radical work in your life. Um, I know this is true because I have seen this. When Anytime I go through a dark season in my life, it it, it will either make me or it's going to break me. And, and I would say that for the most part, it, it has made me who I am today in a good way. And I'm sure there's some things that have happened in my past that I would have to say that really are still bad seasons within my life, and I'm still working through them. But these bad seasons, these dark seasons are essential for us to understand the full spectrum of what, of what, we're, what God wants us to learn. And I think this is interesting because I've been going through this series in First Peter, First Peter chapter one, and uh, what's interesting about First uh, Peter chapter one, especially in the first uh, first few verses, starting with verse six, it says, "In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various." trials, meaning you're in a you're in a dark season right now because of specific trials that are happening in your life, so that, listen to this, the tested genuineness of your faith. The reason why you're going through this dark season, this, this moment in life, is because God is testing your faith. He's testing your resolve. He's testing whether or not you're committed to him, you're committed to his calling. Right now, we're in a season of testing. On the Roe versus Way uh, saga that continues to move on. What what an exciting thing for us as Christians that has been overturned. But we're seeing a rising up of people who are truly testing our resolve and our our hearts for the Lord. And what's been sad for me is actually seeing so many of my um, believing friends actually upset that Roe versus Wade was overturned. When we should be excited, we should be excited because. Because basically, this puts it back into the hands of people to be able to make decisions within the state. I, I mean, I would love it personally if we we just demolished all abortion because I think it it's wrong. I think uh, I think life started way before way before mom and dad came into into an existence because the Bible said that that God knew us before the foundations of the world. So when we go through these dark seasons, how are we wrapping ourselves around what that dark season is doing for us? Do we do we get discouraged? I had a friend call me just here in the last couple of days, and he's talking about struggles that are taking place in his life, and and what is he going to do, and how is he going to handle it? He's already approached people on it, but there there doesn't seem to be a resolve, and through the conversation as I'm listening, and that's very valuable as leaders, we need to listen um, to that person that is uh, expressing themselves. As I'm listening to him, I'm reminding him afterwards 
that maybe the reason that God is allowing this is because he's he's refining you into something better than you could even imagine. But that's hard for us, isn't it? It's hard for us to reconcile the fact that why that God, first of all, would put a trial in our life, but but to come to the realization that not only is he allowing this trial to be in our life, that he's using it to refine us. And what it says here is that so that the tested genuineness of your faith, so that your faith would be exposed not only to God, but the people that are watching you go through that trial. Is your faith in the things of this world? Is your faith in whatever the outcome is within the trial? Or is your faith in the fact that God's in control of all things? And then he says, more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire. So so this, this processing that is taking place in the trial is is that it's it's taking out the impurities through the fire like it like the fire does when you're you're melting the gold it's taking out all of the impurities out of there so that it's pure gold and this trial is actually refining you to take out all the impurities in your life so you're a resemblance of this beautiful jewel this beautiful bar of gold this beautiful coin this precious metal so that you look more like the image of Christ. And then he says, though you have not seen me, though you don't, you have not seen God, you love me. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is inexpressible and filled with glory, obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your soul. So it comes right back to this truth. The desert and the dark seasons in your life may be the most essential part of your spiritual development and may serve as the precursor to God revealing his plan that initiates a radical work in your life. So when this trial is coming up in your life, are you ready for it? Are you excited for it? Are you encouraged by it? Because you should. The truth is, is that trial wouldn't be coming in your life if God wasn't trying to do something in your life and Satan needed to attack against it. And when Satan attacks, that's when the trial comes into play. But who's refining us? Do we let Satan refine us or do we let God refine us. Something I think is very, very valuable for us as leaders is that however we handle it, the people we lead, that is how they probably are going to handle it as well. Puts the pressure on us, doesn't it? But that's part of being a leader. So I would encourage you as you're thinking through your 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 life, you're thinking through all the trials that you may be in, and you're thinking about uh, how I can be a better husband, or how you can be a better wife, or how you can be a better um, uh, parent, or how you can be a better grandparent, or how you can be a better leader within your church, or how you can be a better leader at work. When those trials come, the best thing you can do is understand some of the things that are taking place within that trial are there to shape you into who God desires you to be. This is Chip Nightingale. This is truth number one of a, I don't know how many part series that we're going to go through, but at least three. And we're going to talk about how we as leaders are to handle trials. This is Chip Nightingale. And yes, you can lead.